Welcome to the getaway. I'm Pastor Danny Akers. I pastor Victory Rock Praise and Worship Center in Galleon, Ohio, and this is the episode of the getaway. We're going to be talking about the renewing of the mind today with Fred Sewell. He's a guest of ours today, and he comes all the way from Frankfort, Kentucky. And I'm excited to do this with him today because I know God is just going to uh, use this video to help you in renewing your mind. So we're just going to jump right into the lesson today. And welcome, Fred. I'm glad you could join us today. And what's God got uh, on your heart today for us and uh, on renewing the mind? Okay. Well, um, I there's there, God has exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think um, for us. That, but it's according to the power that works within us. Amen. And uh, that, but but the soul, the soul, the mind, will, and emotion. Um, it, you know, the Bible says that, um, the end of our faith is the salvation of our soul. So when our soul is transformed, there is it, it, it is because you have, um, uh, what you believe, not what you just speak or quote, because the, uh, I've heard this preaching is very good and can't take away from it. It's awesome how it said is the spirit, the soul of a man reciteth, but the spirit of a man speaketh. That's why it says, I have, I have believed and therefore have I spoken. Well, that's good. So, that's good. Um, but if your mind's not renewed, then you're not going to allow your mouth to speak what's in your spirit. Yes. So you're just saying it out of your mind. And there's people that can say by his stripes, I'm healed, but they're saying it out of here. And, and die, and then they they adopt a doctrine of because you, uh, because uh, brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so, they died and they were good, they were very good people, and they probably were, but they didn't have the revelation of by his stripes I'm healed in the spirit. You know, you bring up a good point, and then we're going to go to the scripture. Um, I've seen this, Fred, many times, being a pastor of over 30 years, you know, uh, people that don't get into faith, that don't get their mind renewed, and they don't totally get that understanding or that revelation, then they want to change the doctrine to fit what's happening to them. But see, I believe that God wants to set the doctrine, or he does set the doctrine through the word, and then you have to conform to his doctrine, but instead of us being conformed to what somebody else teaches. So jump into scripture here, and I'll read along with you uh, if you want to read it out loud. Yeah, because the Bible does say, let God be true, the word, and let every man be alive. Absolutely. So if the word says he healed us by his stripes, that's what we are. Yes. And that's who we are. We're the healed that the enemy tries to cause sickness or the, the uh, rich that the enemy tries to cause uh, us to be enslaved by poverty or the uh, righteous that the enemy tries to bring us back into the sin uh, consciousness. But Jesus redeemed us from all three of them. But uh, Romans 12, and let's read here. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So right there, we got to come to God. We must believe that he is God Amen. and that he will reward us with that mind of Christ. Because when we have his mind, um, we come short of nothing. So, so this is a principle and, and, and just correct me you know, if I'm wrong here, but, but, 
if you present your body, then God already has the plan to do the other work. Because through Christ, that work was accomplished on the cross. That's exactly right. In First Thessalonians, it says that we, uh, uh, I don't know exactly off the head, but it says that we are a spirit. We are spirit, soul, and body. It's First Thessalonians 5. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah 5, 22, 23. But it says we are a, uh, we are a spirit. We have this mind, will, and emotion, the filler, thinker, and chooser. But we live in this physical body. So when we bring this physical body under subjection to the word, he can heal all three. So tell us, um, Fred, because, you know, I don't want to get into your testimony because you recently, uh, uh, Fred attends Faith Victory Church with uh, Pastor Philip Derber. He, him and his wife, uh, Bethany, shared their testimony on one of the recent episodes there. And you can go and watch that. We got to see the first part and it was really good. So we're not getting into your testimony, but I want to just know, when did you start noticing, because going to a faith-believing church and and where you came from in your background, when did you first start knowing the renewing of your mind? Did you did it start happening with you? Well, when I first got born again, I knew something happened spiritually, but my mind was still a ruckus. It's still oh, a mess. I remember those days. Yes. Yeah, so when I went to <laughs> Pastor Phillips' church, he taught me, you know, that we are spirit, have a soul and live in the body. And so I had, that's where I started learning the distinction between the, the three, realizing they all needed help. And thank God Jesus came, the word came in and perfected the inner, the spirit, but at the same, and the perfecting, but at the same time, he, um, he had a lot to work to do on my soul. Uh -huh. And um, so sitting under the teaching of uh, the man of God, you grasp a hold of that and you recognized that there's some things in your mind that yet has not yet been accomplished. That's exactly right. And the reason why I did that is because I was hungry and thirsty for righteousness. Amen. And because of that, I was filled with the, um, with the uh, understanding. You know, one of the things that comes to my mind, Fred, as you were talking there, I've heard this as a pastor so many times. Well, it doesn't matter where I go to church. But if you hadn't have been in the right church and heard this teaching, you still could be walking around with an unrenewed mind, not enjoying the benefits and the blessings that God had for you. But because the teachings and you grab a hold of it, now your mind's renewed. And I know it ain't a completed work because God's still working in all of us, but you're learning more mm -hmm. and you're learning more. So just share with us what else God shows you. Yeah. And so, so he says that, that be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of our mind. And, uh, and of course, as I said, brought it to is our seamer tries to get in the way of our miracle because when your seamer, your, your mind, uh, submits to your spirit and your spirit and, uh, so together instantly, you're going to be, it's going to happen in your physical body. Now I've never heard the mind called a seamer. Well, was that something you came up with? Well, no, uh, it's it's been taught, but at the same time, because it reasons. Okay. You can reason it away. Because uh, there's a way that seemeth right. Yes, that's, it. yes. Okay. And the end of that way is death, and it's okay. considered my way. I never heard that. Yeah. Well, I like that, because that scripture came to my mind. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, mm -hmm. but the end thereof is destruction. So your seamer, <laughs> you can seem like it's the right thing to do, but if it's not in line with the word of God, then, you know, you're reasoning your way out of the perfect will. Because I love that what you read there, it says that the good and acceptable and perfect. So it's almost as though there's three levels. So you can do good, but that's not acceptable, and it's definitely not perfect. And that's what you said a while ago. Some people, you know, may fall short. They may even die short because they were good people. But maybe what they did was a, in the perfection that God wanted them to live. Yeah, so let's read it, and yeah. it's, it's going okay. to match what you're saying. And in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Let us therefore, Hebrews 4, verse 1, Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left of us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Wow. So you, so, so you can seem and come short of the glory of God. That's good. And see, so, and then right underneath there, watch this. And here it is. He's talking about the children of Israel that went in, that didn't make it because they doubt and unbelief God. 
And so in the in the uh, second ver uh, verse of here, it says, "For unto us what." Uh, was the gospel preached uh, as well as unto them, but the word preached, it didn't profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So you can actually sit in a faith teaching church and, and it's uh, still not profit you. That's exactly right. And uh, because the word of God, it's, it's faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, but in that hearing, it's an understanding the word. Okay. It's through faith we understand. And, and there's a difference. With, we have two sets of ears, or three sets, really, but what I'm talking about right now, spirit soul, is, is we hear, let him that has ears to hear, let him hear. He was talking about that in Mark chapter 4. They all had ears, but hear. Then that's so there's a hearing, yeah, that hearing, that understanding. And, and, and we'll go there right here because it's very good. This was laid on my heart. Well, um, well, let's well, just go. Not, we're not going to Mark. We'll just go to the uh, Luke's account here. What chapter? Luke chapter 8. And we'll just go right, verse 18, straight to it. <clears throat> Luke 8, 18. Uh huh. My pages are stuck. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Take heed, therefore, how you hear. For what whosoever had, for wh whosoever has, to him shall be uh, given, but whosoever has not, from him shall be taken oh, even which he seems to have. So he seems to have. So if it seems, if you keep it here, it can be taken. But when it drops down into your heart and you meditate on it, and uh, out of the abundance of your heart, you will speak that what you believe. So in other words, if I'm understanding this right, and I believe I am. You take heed that you hear because whatsoever you have to him be given, which definitely uh, blows away uh, socialism because in socialism, they want to take away from he who has and give to he who don't. Mm. But then people don't understand, you know, they get offended in God because he who has gets more and he who seems to have don't get nothing and it didn't work for me. Well, follow the pattern of the one who got it. That's yeah. right, because God's not a respecter of persons, yeah. he's a respecter of faith. But he's only honoring his word. Mm -hmm. He ain't trying to, he's not trying to shortchange you, but he can't bless you uh, if you don't uh, take heed and to hear and let this have, you know, build this faith in you so he can give you more. Mm. I love that. It says, you know, for whosoever hath to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not for him shall be taken, because he just seemed to have it. He didn't really have it. He just seemed to have it. So that makes total sense to me. Yeah, and, and when, you, when you got it, it's like Abraham. Abraham was fully persuaded. He didn't, he didn't, he was, he, he was fully persuaded that what God had said to him, God was able also to perform. Oh. And because of that, he didn't stagger in unbelief and doubt and waver in it. He was fully persuaded. So once he had the promise, once he had to act on the promise, then God could give him more. That's exactly right. That's good. And um, uh, because he, the Bible says who in Abraham, Romans 4, it says who against hope, he believed in hope. Who against, his, he, was not, he was old, but he, he, he didn't recognize, he didn't look at his body as dead. He See, considered not. See, so you're stirring up something else in me here because, you know, one thing that the Holy Spirit used to tell me because before I had, you know, because, you know, through faith now, you know, we have the church, we have, you know, blessings that God has given us and we was able to build everything here debt free. But long before I had that, every time I seen someone that God was given more, the Holy Spirit told me one day, he said, you need to rejoice with them. And see, but my mind would say, well, I don't have it. I'm not walking in that. You know, why? Sh but I, I didn't go by what seemeth right to me. I did what the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and I would rejoice with that person, and I would thank God and even pray that, it, you know, things went good. But in the world, you'll watch people, they get this jealous spirit on them, and because you have and they don't, then they use that seamer, as you call it, and then they end up losing what they do have. 
Yeah, but see, that's where it also is, is when you, you know, you don't, just because someone has something, yeah, you don't, you rejoice with them. Exactly. Because if it's if it be of God, you can't overthrow it. No. But, there, you know, there's a lot of people that try to dress themselves from the outside in. Absolutely. And God didn't call you and I to have an, in, an outside in work. He wants us to work. It's God that worketh in us for us to work it out. Howard, yes. And because when it's worked from the inside, it's root and bearing fruit from the inside out. So if someone goes to take your fruit, it'll come right back because they outside didn't give it to you. The world didn't give it to you and the world can't take it away. Amen. That's good. And, so, and, I, and I've always taught for years that, you know, God works from the inside out. He built the furniture in the temple before he built the temple. Uh, he changes us, renews us inside before he blesses us outside. But we have this seamer, I like that word. Mm -hmm. We have this seamer that seems like we want to do everything from outside in. Mm -hmm. And then when we lose what is outside, we don't know how to get more. Mm -hmm. But when it comes from inside, like you said, I like that. You pick a fruit, it grows another piece of fruit. So things produce, you know, faith produces in us because we're walking and have, we do have. So when we share, more will come. Matter of fact, he says it's get, it's better to give than to receive. Mm -hmm. See, that don't make sense to the seeming, seamer mind because the seamer mind says, I gather into myself, I have more. But the word says, give and it shall be given unto you. So there you have it. You know, it, it's a it's a law of faith that begins to work in you uh, when you come to that understanding. But if you don't ever come to that understanding, you're just going to struggle in your life, your whole life. You're just going to walk around jealous of people who God has blessed. You're going to walk around not understanding. And then you're going to get a hold of this self-pity spirit and feel sorry. I thank God I was obedient and rejoiced for those who had what I didn't have because now God's given me uh, uh, many blessings that I can be a blessing to others. Okay, what else you got? Well, first? well, the, the seamer of the mind, um, the mind outside of the word is crazy. It'll, it'll, it, it'll, it thinks up evil without God, and so that's why it says right here in Romans eight, it says, um, verse five, it says. For they that are after the flesh, they do mind the things of the flesh. Amen. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. And then right here, for to be carnally minded is death. Right. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the very next verse says, uh -huh. because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Mm -hmm. So see, so the carnal mind is is working against what God has for you, because it just can't um, it, it can't be in subjection to it until it's renewed. Mm -hmm. And that's where in Second First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, chapter two, it says that. Uh, uh, talks about we have you know uh, it says but we have the mind of Christ Amen. so we have the mind of Christ so he gave us his mind um, for us to put his mind let this mind be in you he didn't just say I, I got this mind and I don't want you to have it he said let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who of the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God wow. but he made himself of no reputation and he took upon he took upon the form of a servant. And became, he came as a, a fashion of a man, and became obedient unto death. And that's where we have to die to our ways, our motives, our ideas, and our uh, uh, seeming right ways. Because if they don't line up with this right word, they're wrong. And I've seen people that said, "I believe this and I believe this," but through this pandemic thing that went on, I saw different. Right. Uh, because uh, you looked around and there wasn't many as all were proclaiming that he's the healer. He's the, you know. See, he thought it not robbery. You said to be equal with God. So basically what he was saying there was it's not wrong to bring uh, this renewed mind and this, this faith, law of faith in the flesh. You're, you're, you're actually doing what God wants you to do. You're actually living the life he wants you to live. So therefore, we're watching this faith work in us 
And it's not through our natural mind, but it's through the gift of God. That's He's right. given to every man the measure of faith. Mm -hmm. So we have faith. We just have to learn to work the faith. Mm -hmm. And it's not it's not working against us. It's working for us. That's that's powerful. And, and you know, when you... When you really believe the word, it's always going to be tested. Yes. Because the enemy knows when you believe. There is a, a devil that people try to not uh, to keep out of the way, but he's there. He's a, he's he's he comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. John uh, ten ten. But see, isn't it part of our natural mind that rejects test? Because the minute you hear the word test, your mind goes into some like, oh, I'm going to be exposed for what I don't know. But how easy is a test if you know the answer? That's exactly right. You know, we, we can take an open book test. <laughs> I mean, you know, I went to some class here recently and uh, they said, oh, the test is, uh, is uh, open book. I'm like, well, how easy can that be? So, but you know, you, you just stirred that up in me. Uh, you know, don't think it's some strange thing that these things come up on you. You got an open book test, people. Go to the book. And get the answer. Mm -hmm. I like that. Now, and, and we're uh, close here. I think this might be the last verse I'm sharing. Uh, in Mark chapter 4, it talks about the, the Jesus. It says in verse uh, 2, Mark 4, verse 2, it says, And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine. And his doctrine was about seed being put in a heart. Yeah. And um, they went out a sore to suck. Uh -huh. And he, he goes on, but here's where I want to go to. It's talking about in, in the fourth chapter, it's talking about the uh, different grounds of the heart. And he's preaching all day to his disciples. And he says over here, uh, and let me see here. What verse you in? That's what I'm looking right here and trying to find it. Yeah, because I'm here. So the doctrine he's teaching here is the doctrine of sowing and reaping. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he was, he was the seed is the word of God, so he was sowing himself into others. So and, if you sow the seed, it'll bring forth what the mind can't conceive. So, you know, if you walk according to the natural mind, it's enmity against God, and it can't even conceive the things that God has for you. So you got to get that mind renewed so that it just can accept the perfect and good will of God in your life. So God's will is going to confuse your mind, I guess, if you don't get the mind renewed. And you'll just, if you choose to do what's in your mind, you'll miss what God has for you. Yeah, yeah. And right here, uh, verse uh, 30, uh, Mark, 4. Mark 4, 35. And, and the same day that he was preaching all the seed time and harvest, he said, in the same day when evening was come, all day he preached, and evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitudes, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so it was now full. And he was in the hinder part asleep, of the ship, uh, excuse me, uh, the ship in a hundred part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and said unto him, Master, carest you not that we perish? And he just got through saying about, uh, he was teaching them. And so what came up out of their heart, what came up out of them was, carest not that we perish. And he had taught them. See, that's why when you're hungry and thirsty, you're going to make mistakes and we're all going to make mistakes. But if we're hungry and keep on eating at, at the dinner table, we will be filled with this. Yes. And the end time is uh, unshakable faith and our minds totally renewed to uh, this is the way. So their minds, their seamer mind that you called it, went right to perishing. That's exactly right. It went to perishing instead of going to faith. It went to perishing instead of going to God's provisions. Mm -hmm. But a renewed mind will go to what thus saith the Lord. Yeah, and that's what happened. The mind of Christ, Jesus got up and he rebuked that storm, told it, said, peace, and he did that. And they wondered, his disciples said, what manner of man is this that even the storms yeah. obey all this? Because he had his mind. He said he only done what he what he heard his father say. Dude, that's what Jesus was about pleasing the father. So when he walked out there, they woke him up and he walked out there. 
he didn't let his mind focus on perishing the danger of the ship he didn't let his mind go to the natural aspects that's right his mind went to the word of god his mind went to the will of the father see that good and perfect will of god god has a will for you and if you've watched this episode today and fred has very well dis demonstrated to us that you can have a renewing of the mind and you can know that perfect will of God. So when you start working in that good, uh, acceptable, perfect will, it's kind of like a three phase there. So when you first get into this, uh, your mind's going to get stretched, you mm -hmm. know, because we all went through that. But as we mature, as we grow and the word takes place in us, then we're going to begin to see the goodness come. We're going to begin to see uh, the acceptable. And then we'll begin to see the perfect. There is nothing more exciting than walking in the perfect will of God. There's a peace, there's an understanding, and there's things that happen to us. The blessings come in the perfect will. Well, Fred, I want to thank you for sharing that with mm -hmm. us. That's very powerful. It's a good word. We hope this blessed you. Uh, we're coming to you on the episode of The Getaway, uh, talking about a renewed mind. And we're coming to you on WFBN TV. You also watch this again on the Victory Rock the Getaway YouTube channel, and you can share this, watch it again, but we just thank you. We'd like to hear from you here at uh, Victory Rock. We have a number, 419-989-8270. If you drop us a text, let us know you've been blessed. Thank you again for watching. God bless you. We'll see you on the next episode. I see.